Hi there folks, my name's Novawing24 and welcome to the Nova Wrap, your one-stop summary and for all the releases and goings on in the simulation world from the week that was. Alrighty, so here we are on Sunday the 13th of March 2016 and let's get straight into it with the releases for... So we're going to the Roads of Berlin to start with. So we're looking at the uh, some OMSI 2 releases. So OMSI 2, of course, the uh, bus simulator that's uh, quite popular out there in the simulation and the busing community. Uh, so we've got uh, two new releases this week uh, from the guys over at Aerosoft. So uh, this week we see uh, a couple of new buses added in. We've got the City Bus uh, a Zero... 0305 Golf, and we also see the uh, City Bus 0405 and 0405 Golf. So uh, essentially, what we're looking at is we're looking at the for the 305 Golf, we're looking at the articulated, stretched version of this one. Um, so uh, it's got all the different uh, models and stuff, and all the uh, hazards, of course, that come with using an uh, an articulated bus, at least a stretched bus, um, and designed uh, for use across the um, the Spandau line, Grindelwald line, and the city bus sphere of uh, Nurendorf. So uh, quite interesting that one there. Um, it comes with again you know, all the different. Uh, articulated features and stuff like that. I, I don't know. I, honestly, I've never played OMSI 2 or, or the original OMSI and it's sort of like, it does intrigue me a little bit. It does, but anyway. Uh, especially when they mention the fact that it's got an authentic pollution model, which is uh, kind of interesting. So there you go. Um, in the, as I said, the uh, there was a second release of that one for that one. That was the uh, 405 and the 405G. Um, so this one essentially is the updated and newer version um, of the 305. So this was uh, built between uh, 97, 2001 and, uh, and sort of uh, still sort of in use around some places as well and slightly more modern looking uh, again very beautifully detailed and uh, visibly done with the uh, the guys from the guys over at Aerosoft um, it's all sorts of custom scripting as well so yeah, everything from the uh, gearbox destination space through to the ticket machine which is kind of intriguing kind of weird kind of cool uh, and again uh, it talks about the um, like the uh, pollution model as well which is as I said that, that, that actually is kind of interesting uh, along with a dynamic rain effect. Now, okay, it's going to be, it might be a bit weird that I bring up dynamic rain, but you know what, dynamic rain is something that's, um, at least for flight simulation, is a bit of a, a holy grail thing, and there are very few um, aircraft that were able to give the sort of dynamic rain effects uh, well. There's very, very few that can do it, because uh, it was something that was uh, taken out of FSX when it uh, came out, when it was upgraded from FS9. So, yeah, seeing something with, with you know, real rain effects is actually kind of cool and kind of fascinating, but yeah, there you go. Anyway, so these uh, two OMSI 2 add-ons are available from the Aerosoft store, uh, or of course are from Steam. So just log in and download from there. So these are, these are available now for your bus simulation pleasure. Alright, sticking at ground level for a bit, we're moving to the world of train simulations. So we saw a, a couple of interesting releases in train, the train sim world this week. So uh, we saw uh, one add-on uh, for Train Simulator 2016 come out. That was the British Rail Class 58 locomotive. Um, so again, this was a uh, the one out of the 80s. Um, and much like the uh, the 305G uh, bus that we talked about just before, very much a, a child of the 80s. Um, so the Class 58 was built uh, by in the Dogcaster Works uh, for British Rail they needed a, a new uh, freight locomotive moving on into the future and uh, and they copied some design features from their American cousins and looking at sort of you know some standardized section and sections and stuff like that so they can you know almost like a modular type construction which is a kind of an interesting history point that one so the Class 58 uh, will continue on um, in uh, in service up until the early 2000s uh, when it was uh, finally retired from uh, rail lines in the UK. Um, however, they would actually go on to be used again in the continent. Um, so they were, uh, they saw uh, quite a few, uh, quite a bit of work well into the uh, uh, mid and uh, late to of the uh, early of the 2000s uh, in the continental Europe. Uh, though one uh, though one does remain in the UK uh, preserved and still operational for uh, the historic things as well. There you go. Uh, now, this one is fully compatible with uh, your quick drive sort of uh, simulation stuff like that. It does include four scenarios, as well, four, five scenarios, sorry, five scenarios, um, all of which will only work with the Great Western Mainline route, which you would need to purchase separately. So again, that uh, as we uh, come to expect from Train Sim, a bit of uh, cross-pollination when it comes to the DLC there, um, but it, of course, is compatible with Steam Workshop scenarios or your custom scenarios as well. So there you go, fully compatible across there. 
Now, we saw another release for Train Sim Train Simulator 2016 this week, and this one I'm not sure on. I'm not sure I like this idea. Um, I, I'll be honest. I, it's okay. So we saw American Power Hall Train Simulator coming out, um, which essentially what it is, it's uh, Train Sim 2016, but it's just the American themed locomotives and the American Sherman uh, Sherman's Hill um, track with uh, with associated scenarios. Um, so it's it just has that section of the game that's it so it's still it's the same engine as 2016 it's the the same train that you've seen uh train sim 2016 um but it's just the american scenarios now i i did a bit of digging on this one because i saw this and thought that looks suspiciously like you know the american you know, the u.s train that i've seen in 2016 when i play it um it is, and it's the same route. So, yeah. so I dug a bit more into it, and it turns out that um, Dovetail Games are going to be offering um, standalone sort of versions um, of both of not only this uh, Shamsil, the American scenario, but also the Riviera line of the fifty and fifties, and the Colne Koblenz um, route as well. Um, and then there's an option. Is, so basically, it's sort of designed as a uh, a lower cost entry point. Um, for you to go into getting um, getting your, your, your you know, getting your engine driver's hat on, as it were, uh, for train simulation, um, before deciding if you want to jump in it in full or not. Um, and yeah, I, I'm not 100% sold on this. Like, okay, interesting idea, but my concern is the price point they've set this at. So your standard train simulator 2016 Steam edition with all the normal stuff and bells and whistles um, is about 40 US dollars uh, so have this single route come in at 25 US dollars is a little odd like I would have expected this to be sitting around the 19 US dollar mark to be honest I, I didn't expect it to be um, sitting so high as a price point I would have expecting you know yeah at 19 you know 20 US dollars tops um, so a bit surprised with this one um, because as I said and they specifically state on the although it's not mentioned and I think this is a definitive um, oversight um, that it doesn't say on the product page and seem that you know this is simply you know taken from you know Train Simulator 2016 it's only mentioned in very fine print on the website on the product announcement on the Train Sim on the uh, trainsimulator.com website so uh, yeah look I, I get the idea um, that you can sort of just share a small slice of the market. I'll be honest, it's over, I think it's overpriced, um, and I think people, it, it needs to be a little clearer in the product as well, saying that this is actually just Train Sim 2016, just a slice of it, that's all. So, yeah, I, I, I'm a little... Um, unimpressed uh, with the way this was released and it seems that we're going to see the same thing for the next uh, for the other two uh, routes that became as standard as part of uh, of Train Sim 2016 so yeah interesting, interesting, I'll be interested to see how how sales for this go um, and see if we do see a price drop in the future because yeah I think it's a little overpriced what it is but yeah anyway that's just me anyway so that but that is available now so if you haven't tried Train Sim before and you just want to try um, a small slice of it and want to get your American train muscle on um, possibly something to look at though honestly if you're going to go into for trains probably just bite the bullet and go for the whole sim um, just throwing it out there so yeah anyway that's my two cents worth moving on alright so we're going to move uh, okay so that pretty much wraps up the land side of things today so we're going to move into the world of flight simulation now so we're going to move the flight simulation starting with uh, scenery so the wonderful guys uh, the wonderful guys over at Drizweki oh my god I, seriously I've been doing this for about four years now and do you think I can still pro I can pronounce this guy's name I really can't anyway Drizweki Design um, <laughs> so uh, he's released his latest airport uh, so this is uh, Chris and Al, uh, or Lima Uniform Kilo Kilo um, for um, FSX, FS9, P3D, all its variants, and for X-Plane as well. So X-Plane users rejoice, you've got a new one here as well. Um, so this is the uh, main airport, um, uh, also known as uh, Krishnev, uh, is the, for the largest city in the Republic of Moldova. Um, considering that Moldova doesn't really have any scenery and terrain, 
Kind of cool, great way to introduce it as well, this one. So there you go. So we're at now International Airport here. Um, it's the main international airport just to the southeast of the, the main city. Um, it got a pretty interesting history on it. Um, first initial schedule flights going back to the mid twenties. Um, the airport sort of first beginning in like you know um, in the immediate aftermath of the First World War. So yeah, kind of cool, interesting history of that one and with the area. Um, full capacity. Yeah, it's got a great set of features in there as well. So we got um, you got a quite nice, nice long runway there, so you can fly whatever you like in there. So you get everything from your 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 little little uh, tiny little uh, DA forty twos all the way up to your giant 747s. Uh, it is capable of taking all of all flight simulators uh, and all flight simulation aircraft or whatever you want to have. Uh, fully ILS equipped runway or models. Um, really, really intensely as you know, as usually to expect from Dzwecki Designs. Um, yeah, the stupidly, incredibly detailed modelling of the buildings um, as well as up-to-date scenery. Um, uh, correct, as of looks like 2016, it does look like from looking at uh, some of the information there on the well on the actual website of the uh, of the airport. Um, so including all the new New buildings, terminals, taxiways, all the usual stuff. Um, and again, another cool little feature that we saw, of course, uh, initially with Sim 720, and of course, seeing now more of developers do as well. Internal modeling of the building is as well, so you can actually seem like so you actually get more of that feel of an airport when you're there. Um, and of course, uh, and a, a great a whole another hallmark of a great designer is including um, autogen and, and seasonal based autogen and textures as well, which is really really cool. Um, as well as you, you, all the custom autogen, custom built landmarks, um, and interesting enough, the sim object uh, and SOED compatibility as well. I'm not sure exactly what's compatible with it, but it is. Um, and it is designed to be compatible with a variety, as it says, uh, all kinds of mesh land class vector add-ons for the area. That's a little vague. I'm assuming that means it's uh, uh, compatible with both UTX and uh, UTX uh, brand products and FS Mesh, uh, FS Genesis products, and of course with uh, Orbix products as well. Uh, so interesting. Um, but yeah, there you go. So that is available uh, now. This is available from uh, the website directly or from your favourite flight sim retailer. All right, moving on into armor simulation uh, releases for the week. Um, so we've got um, a little product called Desk Pilot. Now, uh, I'm... All right, so... I have a few interesting things with this uh, with this product. So basically, Desk Pilot is designed for exclusive use with the PMDG 737 NGX and the 777. That's it. Um, now, originally, he's released a, he released a basic version of this as sort of like a technology demonstrator of it uh, a few years ago as, as freeware, which is it's still available as freeware. But if you want all the features in the triple seven, you do need to get the payware version. Um, now, his stated aim, the developer's stated aim, is to actually make it so that um, you can do a shared cockpit um, solution for PMD. PMDG product, yeah, the PM, the PMGG 737 NGX, uh, and now the triple seven. Um, it, it's interesting because he essentially, because P, PMDG aircraft, um, because they are insanely detailed and use a lot of custom scripting, customized stuff like that, things that are not normally transmitted across a, a standard multiplayer network. Um, you miss out on a lot of the things if you try and do a, a standard sort of multiplayer shared cockpit scenario with PMDG aircraft. It just it works, but not really. Um, whereas this one essentially uh, bypasses your standard FSX multiplayer um, and works inside of um, using a direct connection sort of idea. So the idea is, and and, and that actually is is kind of good for anybody because a lot of the people who fly the PMG um, seven three seven and triple seven, of course, you know, love flying on IVAO and Batsim. So now you can actually get a, a full true multi crew environment doing that as well, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, and kind of interesting if you're into that thing. Um, so I I see that this product has its place. Um, I do, and it's got some interesting functionality as well. Um, with the fact that you know it it, it does you know um, you know share the fact that you know the roles can be changed. You can switch roles and stuff like that. Um, it does. It supports most things as well. Um, it does everything. You know, it, it integrates well because of the uh, use of the PMDG uh, SDK. So it integrates very, very well with that. Um, it's got a lot of things in there. The only thing it really doesn't do is it doesn't um, sync the F uh, the FMS. Um, which is a bit of a shame, um, but apparently that's to do with issues with the limitations of the PMDG's SDK that's been released. So uh, we'll, we'll forgive him for that one. Um, 
and yeah, so y you can go through that kind of stuff. Um, but you know, to me, it's I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not going to use this because I don't use tube liners. Tube liners are not my thing. Um, but you know, it still looks kind of interesting. Um, and if you are a PMDG user and you do want to enhance your experience with a multi-crew scenario, this is probably going to be software that you do want to pick up that, that you and your uh, co-pilot and your cabin crew want to pick up for that because it does look kind of interesting. Um, it is, uh, uh, caution, it is limited though, as I said at the moment, to two aircraft and two aircraft only, which is the 737 NGX and the 777 uh, from PMDG. Um, there is talk on, there is actually a poll if you want to see some other additional aircraft come through. There's a poll on the website, which I'll pop in the description down below, uh, for whatever um, that you want to see next. So, um, as I said, this is not a replacement. Well, this is not a replacement for normal multiplayer. It's just a different way of doing it. Um, and interestingly enough, it also only works with FSX. Um, he specifically states um, that it is not um, for P3D, which I think is an oversight. I, I think that's an oversight. Um, I think that's something that he should, the developer should really look into. Um, because a lot of P again, a lot of PMDG users out there are actually using, I, I, I believe, are using P3D. Um, from talking to the, the the ones that I know, they pretty much have all made the switch over to P3D once um, PMDG started fully supporting P3D. So, yeah, probably something that the uh, if the developer, if you're watching, um, I would highly recommend that you look at uh, making it compatible with P3D. At least make it with uh, compatible with 2.x, um, if not version three. Um, in fact, actually, just you know, skip 2.x, go straight to version 3. Uh, so yeah, highly recommend that you do that. Anyway, moving on. As I said, interesting pilot available now um, from uh, Sim Market, uh, from uh, the Sim Market, um, or your favourite flight sim, and or from the Flight Sim Store as well. Available now. Alrighty, and a couple of other. Actually, we've gone back to. Uh, uh, for, oh dear, I almost forgot two other scenery releases that um, I almost forgot about there. Oh dear. I'm, I'm slipping, I think. All right, so we've got two new scenery releases this week. Um, so we've uh, seen one from RF Scenery Building. Um, so they've released uh, Lima, India, Romeo, Quebec, uh, Florence, Peritola. Uh, so this is available for F6 and for P3D, compatible um, across all the versions of um, uh, F6 and uh, P or P3D versions. Interestingly enough, though, they say that they've tested it in P3D version 3, but they haven't tested it... Um, in 3.2, obviously, um, because that came out right on the release date, so they probably they just sort of threw that in there. Though I think it should, it should be right. Uh, anyway, so this uh, details the, the airport, um, some sort of custom building uh, airport buildings, um, and custom vehicles just modeled just for that one. Um, one thing that's kind of odd, though, is the pseudo shadowing they're using, which essentially they've burnt shadows onto the textures, um, which I think is a bit of a cop out. Um, Probably it would save on frames, absolutely, but I think it's a bit of a cop out. It really is, um, but it does support change of season. Again, uh, a, a really good thing to see, uh, and a good thing to see for when you see um, uh, positive uh, and uh, a sign of sort of quality scenery design and thought uh, is the fact that you see uh, do see the change of seasons, and you've got all, all four seasons modelled as well, which is always great to see. Uh, and the usual, um, you know, fulling go through. Um, and it, they actually interesting recommendation as well. They actually recommend uh, for you to use uh, Orbix uh, FTX Trees HD, which is interesting. Um, not sure that's very interesting that they say that they do that. Um, because I think if John Venomous sees that, he'll probably start peeling through the So, sort of, guys, be careful. You may end up getting your ass sued by John Venomous if you're not careful. Uh, so, yeah, interesting that they point there. Mm, anyway, mm, we'll let that one go. But as I said, this one is available now uh, from your favourite flight sim retailer. All right, in other releases as well, we also saw the release of FSIM, FS, uh, bleh, FSIM, FSIM Studios, Billy Bishop Toronto City Airport. So this is the uh, the airport, the feeder airport that uh, serves Toronto City's uh, sort of centre part, sort of sort of sort of the equivalent to London City Airport. Um, essentially, it's a uh, it's a small airport located on a small island. Um, it, it's just uh, at, in Toronto, in Ontario, in Canada. In Canada. And it's a really great high detail representation of this one. The terminal 
and the hangar buildings look a little rough, um, especially considering that it's a, a 2048 uh, texture thing. The, the, the actual buildings look a li li little bit rough uh, from the screenshots. I'm hoping that's just the resolution of the screenshots um, and uh, not, the, not the actual scenery itself, because that would be a little bit concerning if it is. Um, but the, again, it got the. F but what they've also done, they've also uh, customized and redone Toronto, downtown Toronto as well, to actually again give you that sort of immersion, actually get the surrounding area. So again, it's great to see that an airport developers not just doing the airport but doing the surrounding area as well I think it's very very important to do that um, and, and a really great work again on the uh, winter textures as well so you get that uh, real feeling real real feeling of actually of seeing the snow on the ground during the winter which is great to see um, and, and, interesting, and, and they do uh, acknowledge that you know some of these things are good for high-end systems not so good for low-end systems so it does have uh, your configuration tool to be able to switch a lot of those things on and off as you need so there you go and again that one is available from your favorite flight sim retailer now Alrighty, ready, ready, rounding out the release news, uh, release news, release news for this week. Uh, so uh, from the DCS world, so we'd see that DCS 1.5.3 is now available and released and available for you to uh, patch and upgrade your client to. As well as we finally saw the DCS MiG-15 Biz has actually finally, finally staggered out of its year-long beta and made it to an official, for, uh, full official release. So this is now available as as a full version, of course, already if you've already uh, purchased it as the in the beta period, um, you'll just upgrade now. But if you were hanging on to wait till it was fully tweaked and fully finished by the guys over at Bell Sim Tech, it is now fully finished, finish, fully finished, tweaked, and ready to go for you. Ready for you to go and um, tear up the skies uh, in the single engine mid 15 with its uh, two 23 millimeter and one 37 37 millimeter cannons. So um, a really really interesting little fighter. It's got some incredible history. The MiG 15 does. It really does. Um, it, it is. Believed to be the most widely produced jet aircraft ever made in his in the history of aviation, um, with over 12,000 units built. Simply because of it's solid, it's rugged, it's reliable, and it's easy to maintain. So it uh, it served with air forces and its variants for many many years. In fact, some of the MiG-17 variants, which are the later variants, still are kicking around in some uh, remote parts of the world. So that's highly interesting. Um, the guys in the Bell Sim Tech have actually really gone into a lot of detail as well. So they've uh, uh, they've gone through and redone pretty pretty. From Sound things it looks like they've redone the, the flight uh, flight dynamics as well, um, and they've uh, also done a uh, update the manual and they've uh, put in some training missions as well, so you can actually get the most out of the MiG-15 as well, which is really really cool. Uh, now, as a commemorative weekend for the release of that one, as you'll have a few hours to go from the release of this video, you'll be able to pick up the DCS MiG-15 and the F-86F Saber. It's uh, it's great, uh, it's great adversary in the skies over Korea. Uh, you pick that one up for sixty. Uh, US dollars uh, or your local equivalent from the DCS uh, web store um, or you can pick it up with the uh, DCS Nevada test and training range map as well for 70 US dollars so there you go that is available now a link will be in the description down below Alrighty, that rounds out the release news for this week. Now, as I've, I've said previously, this is all, this is all about a, uh, a releases uh, show is what this is, but I do want to touch on a couple of things because uh, and I I'd normally avoid upcoming releases, but I want to touch on one as well that came out this week. So, uh, if you've been hiding under a rock uh, for the last uh, few months, you would know you, uh, by now, or you may not have, you may have missed, but as I said, you have to be under, hiding under a pretty big rock, uh, that of course, Dovetail Games is releasing uh, two flight simulation titles this year. So, uh, the first one, uh, they're really they'll be releasing their Dovetail Flight Simulator um, that'll be released later this year but in the meantime they'll be releasing Dovetail Games Flight School so we're looking at seeing uh, that one should be on our digital shelves approximately uh, sometime in April um, so and uh, and Dovetail's uh, been uh, very open um, with a lot of their comments and uh, access to the developers so um, Stephen Hood the uh, head creative developer has been uh, been answering lots of our qu lots of the community's questions on a variety of different forums over the last few months which is always great to see the, the transparency of that. Um, and uh, But in the announcement, the announcement sort of said that there was going to be two aircraft for flight school, um, and we knew one was going to be the Piper Super Cub, uh, but we didn't know what the second one was. Uh, now, if you missed it, uh, there was a uh, Reddit, uh, Reddit Q&A um, back, uh, back a couple of days ago, uh, so back on the 11th, uh, 10th, uh, 10th, 11th of March, uh, so that was on the Reddit, so uh, Steve was on hand to answer a lot of the, again, a lot more of the community's questions. Now, 
Now, in that uh, Q and A, there was a uh, announced a small little announcement. Uh, I think some people might have missed it. Uh, but uh, what we're going to be seeing is we're going to the uh, they did announce the second aircraft. So the second aircraft is going to be the Piper Cherokee. So we're going to have two Pipers to play with um, in in Dovetail Games Flight School. Um, now, it, what's kind of ironic about this, uh, particularly when I saw that pop up on the Reddit, is I kind of immediately went, why does that not surprise me? And then I realised, if you go back and have a look at the key art, now this is the the the, the this was before any screenshots hit hit uh, hit the interwebs. Uh, this was just purely the key art that came out. I look at it and go, that's a damn Cherokee. We actually already knew what the second aircraft was. We've known about the second aircraft since day one. And yet, we all somehow missed it. We all missed it. I don't know how we did it, but we did. So anyway, so that's it. It is now official. We do now have the two aircraft. We now do know do now know the two aircraft we're going to have for Flight School, which is going to be the Piper Super Cub and the Piper Cherokee, both officially and fully licensed from Piper as well. So there you go. Uh, if you do want to see some more of the things that were asked uh, and asked and answered in that Reddit Q&A, um, I'll pop the link for the Reddit Q&A for you to have a read in there as well. So go through and have a look and see what you think and uh, see what you can strike from there. Um, I am hoping hoping to or to get uh, a chance to speak uh, with uh, with a representative from Dovetail soon, um, see if we can find out some more information and uh, hopefully uh, we may or may not, uh, if it's successful, we might see that on the channel coming up soon. Alright folks, well that does now wrap up the Nova Wrap for this week. Thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget, as always, to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying these and want to see more. And of course, as always, you can catch up with me and all the things I'm up to between videos by finding me on Facebook and on Twitter. Just search NovaWing24. Alright folks, thanks very much for watching, take care, safe skies to all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.